Police. Today we're taking a look at Convict Drive, which is a new-ish RPG, at least in English, um, put out by, I forget who, I think it was Lion Wing Publishing. Uh, if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I have something of a fascination uh, with foreign RPGs, and in particular Japanese RPGs, and this was originally developed in Japan in Japanese. Uh, Japan has an interesting role-playing game culture with some peculiarities that you don't find so much in, in Western role-playing game culture. Um, their games tend to be very structured, but also tend not to use a ton of miniatures and things. Um, also, they tend to normally use six-sided dice exclusively because getting hold of polyhedrals used to be very difficult. This game uses d10s though, so, so bucking that trend. They also tend to be produced on the cheaper side, though this wasn't necessarily. Um, and weirdly not to have a ton of art for whatever reason. Um, I think we associate Japan with anime and manga and so you might expect their RPGs to be much more richly illustrated than they are but they seem to take a kind of palladium-esque approach of lots of information produced cheaply uh, seems to be the way to go so for whatever reason there you go and for whatever reason we seem to be getting a, a, a more steady flow of translated Japanese RPGs coming through now than we used to. It used to be very much a, a peculiarity, but what with Goblin Slayer, um, Golden Sky Stories, um, and and some others, you know, there's been a steady trickle. Uh, steady trickle. It's been a steady trickle, uh, which now includes. Convictor Drive. Now I just need someone to translate Terror the Gunslinger and I'll be happy. <laughs> but that seems unlikely. Um, hmm. This is an RPG based around the kind of shows that eventually influenced Power Rangers and so on. Uh, less the Sentai, exactly, and more the ones around power suits. So somewhere between Cayman Rider and Bubblegum Crisis is, is where I would put Convictor Drive. So you play agents of uh, a private security force called Drive, who have access to these special power suits. Uh, this is due to the invention of a new technology called Mechatronics, um, which has been developed, uh, which allows for the implementation of exosuits, advanced robotics, uh, nanotech, that, that sort of thing. If you're old school, you can think of it as being similar to robotechnology. Anyway, everyone is quite kind of wary of this new tech, and so it's largely limited to experimental areas or proving grounds. And in this case, a subsection of, of Japan. Uh, Yokohama has been designated as sort of one of these testing zones, and that's where a lot of mechatronics stuff goes on. And obviously new technology means new crimes and so on leading to the creation of Drive, uh, this this particular force. Now, normal mecha rely on big, heavy batteries and so on, and it's uh, somewhat, somewhat impractical, but there are exosuits for all kinds of purposes, police, military, construction, whatever. Your power suits are bleeding edge, new technology, ties into nanotech, uh, but to get the full effect from your suit, you have to have some kind of past trauma. For whatever reason, that allows you to, to sync up with the suit, channel your emotional torment, and that gives you access to the higher level powers 
uh, of the technology of the nanotech and so on. So in Yokohama, the uh, elite security forces of this of this group drive are all traumatized young people with access to hyper military grade technology. What what could go wrong? Nothing, obviously. Um, one of the first peculiarities that you run into in this system is that there are no statistics. There aren't. There are no stats, which feels a bit odd. Though you might look at something like fate and say it doesn't really have stats, just skills, which kind of also represent your stats. But then in fate systems, you also have your various aspects, your your keywords that describe your character. You don't even have that here. All you have is your skills. Um, and there's a f very short list of job-related skills in which uh, you have your, your different levels of skill running from one to five, five being an absolute master. You're not allowed to take things above four at starting level. Your skills include brawling, agility, knowledge, um, negotiation, mechatronics, and suppression. Suppression being the art of fighting multiple enemies all at once. So you distribute your points through that. That has your base human level capabilities. <coughs> Excuse me. You also always wear the, the basic undersuit from your convictor suit, which is basically a, a skin tight thing you can hide under your clothing, but which augments your physical abilities. So whether you are a hulking brute or a, a tiny wee 15 year old Japanese schoolgirl. Um, your skin suit gives you roughly the same physical capabilities. So it's just your skill and your suit that matter. Um, besides customizing your character with their skills, their trauma, some flavor text, and so on, uh, you also design your suit. Uh, there are different models of suit, and the different models of suit have different capabilities and different options. So you can fit different subsystems and weapons to your suit to customize it uh, to your requirements. Now, I found personally that I didn't feel there were enough options, but it should be relatively easy to add and remove options um, to your suit whether we'll get any supplementary material for this I, I don't know but I just felt that the depth of options wasn't really there and you're kind of locked into certain options when you choose a particular kind of suit I felt they should have opened it out a bit more allow you to take options from other suits within your suit but eh, I guess that's down to you down to your games master uh, so yeah, you have your various different types. Uh, what are the types? So there's Adept, which is a generalist suit. There's strength suits, which are you know heavy on the on the physical capabilities and power. Uh, there are shooters. So if you want to go for sniping or gun fu, that's the one to go for. Uh, runners, which are high speed, high maneuverability, uh, and that that's it, basically. Um, so ideally, you'd want different people within your group to play different types, and then to choose their options to maximize diversity of capability throughout the team. Ideally, um, if this were an actual TV series, you'd probably have one of each in your team. Um, and you would move forward from there. In common with a lot of Japanese RPGs, the way that you play the game is incredibly set and organized and structured, which kind of works for this because it is mission-based play. Um, so you have preparation when you get your characters and everything ready 
you have an opening phase where the situation is described, the mission briefing is given, that sort of thing. You have the investigation phase, which is where you piece together the mystery and gather the clues that you need to enter the climax phase, which is the, the big final fight. Um, then you close the session, the players give you feedback on how it went, you give them experience points, experience points are spent, uh, or commendation points as it's called here, and there you go, that's the end of the session. With such a strong structure, this would be very easy to use for solo play if you want if you really wanted to it's it's on my mind so i'm always thinking about that when i review games lately even though i don't personally rate it very much but i know there's plenty of people out there that play solo there aren't explicitly any solo rules but yeah the structure would really lend itself um to that to a great degree you could quite easily write yourself a whole you know series in the style of the um of the Japanese shows e easy enough so the investigation phase is where you'll make the majority of your roles and various elements are broken up into investigation cards so these are little sub missions within the main mission that you complete to gather enough clues to lead you to the climax so they're described like in this case it is stop the kidnappers uh, reveal condition okay this becomes available after you've cleared another investigation card you need to put at least two characters into it skills that are ideal in this situation are knowledge and suppression though you don't have to use those skills with roleplay you could apply a different skill brief little overview of what it's about and what the objectives are now even though stopping the kidnappers might involve combat you don't have to break out the overall combat rules in order to complete this mission indeed how it describes it it, it doesn't do that at all this is just a sort of challenge that you have to overcome so you need to get a certain amount of successes um, in, in order to complete it so, I mean, strictly speaking, mechanics-wise, all you have to do is gather your dice pool. You can partially activate your suits during the investigation sections to use some of the special capabilities that the suits have. You roll that. You roll that number of d10s. Normally, anything, of, I think it's 5 or above or over 5. It's one or the other. Uh, is a success. Tens are criticals and count as two successes. So you have to accumulate that many successes. If you don't accumulate that many successes, you then um, get the opportunity from other players who are involved to make what's called a recovery check. So they can then choose to assist the lead character. They make a role on appropriate skill. Any successes they get are then handed to the lead investigator for that for that issue, who then rolls those additional dice, trying to get enough successes. If they still can't get enough successes, um, you still don't fail. It's just it takes longer or it's done later. So you get to roll an additional three dice. Does that give you enough successes? Yes, great. No, bad. But each time you're forced to go later, you accumulate what's called delay counters, which make the final confrontation and fight more difficult. All right, so fighting the kidnappers, uh, let's say um, I need two successes, I only get one success. One of my friends is there in the fight with me, they join in, they get a couple of successes, so I get to roll another couple of dice, get my second success. Okay, so with help, we suppress the kidnappers and rescue the person that's been kidnapped. If I'd still failed, the kidnappers get away, we maybe track them down later, roll those additional dice. Cool, I've got enough successes to succeed, but the delay and the time and effort spent pursuing them has led to problems, which is where the delay counters come in. So like I say, it's very, very structured. 
So it's really up to you to add the role-playing elements into it there. Climax phase is the final fight. This is where you get into proper combat. Um, this is the kind of final confrontation that you see in a lot of these, a lot of these serials. Uh, combat is again fairly organized, so you will transform your suit into its into its main capability. You will use your weapons. You'll be fighting whoever's most powerful. Um, the power that your suit has limits what you can do in each combat, um, and here is where there's an actual chance of defeat, though it's fairly slim. You can also push your suits further if you're really, really losing. This is like your your ultimate weapon attack, which is where you reveal your trauma, shift your suit into overdrive. You're likely to burn it out and burn yourself out, but that will might maybe put you over the edge um, to succeed. Uh, combat is fought on a grid, three by three, which roughly translates in terms of very big areas as to where characters are in relation to each other. Might be useful to make a, a bigger sort of table map grid for this and maybe some cardboard standees or, or something to show where the various combatants are in relation to each other. Uh, but you don't really need it. It'd just be handy, I think. Uh, it's very rare that you're going to die. <laughs> Basically, if you run out of hit points and are reduced to minus 10 hit points, um, all in one go, that would pretty much have to be, then then your character dies. But it's uh, massively unlikely. Um, commendation points is what's spent to level you up. Um, and the amount of total character advancement points, commendation points that you've earned determines your rank within the organization, which can unlock other things and other duties. Um, in a typical session, you would get seven for surviving, um, three if you stick around and take part in the feedback, uh, three if you were the coordinator for the other players during the mission, uh, one point if you had all your gear ready to play when asked, uh, two points if you arrived at the session on time, and two points if you didn't use your super powerful end move. So you can see how it encourages you through the experience point system to only use your powerful ending move when necessary, and in a very Japanese way, how it encourages the players to be organized and attentive and um, to, to turn up prepared and to turn up at all and on time and so on. So it's kind of meta, isn't it? In encouraging player behavior through character bonuses. But um, maybe that's something we could uh, we could see more of in the future. I don't, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, you can spend points to improve skills, customize your various weapons and gear, which allows some of that deeper customization in the various um, aspects of your suits, which opens it up a little bit, but not, not hugely. We then get a nice little background section. Um, Yeah, you don't really need to know more than I more than I told you, but you know there's some more corporations here, and there's some baddies. Some of the baddies have their own versions of Convictor suits uh, called Deviations or Deviates, something like that. Um, just so you have something equal to you ish out there to fight against. And yeah, there's an evil corporation, uh, private military contractor behind that. Uh, the GM advice is useful because this game is, as I say, incredibly structured. So it helps you to create various scenarios. There's a, a list of baddies, but probably not enough information on how to create your own baddies. Uh, and there is a sample scenario, which, yeah, you know, I regard that as a bit of a waste of space. 
but here maybe because the game is so structured and so different to what we're used to maybe that's a little bit more useful than usual uh, plenty of reference stuff in the back which is always nice when you need a reminder of how things work and uh, some example cards and things that you could photocopy or um, print out I don't know if there's downloads available for your various investigation cards and so on all right then uh, let's give it some scores and uh, a little bit more commentary style wise I really can't get my head around why Japanese games don't leverage their art more there is very minimal art in here maybe slightly more than there was in the original I don't know because you know translation more money available and so on you have a few bigger pieces um, I know the full art for a lot of these pieces was done because it was in the in the crowdfunder but you don't even necessarily see all of it within the book and it, it's not in color which I don't necessarily have anything against but some people will so it's worth mentioning uh, the text is readable but it's um, possibly too simple in terms of layout and the graphic design in the various suit parts uh, weapons tables and so on is possibly too basic for for a game like this certainly and I know flowcharts are gonna put some people off um, and things like the investigation cards I felt could have done with better visual components the writing is bearing in mind it's a translation yeah it's not hugely evocative um, and could have done with a bit of bit of punching up so in terms of style I can't really bring myself I mean these look boring right I can't really bring myself to give it any more than a three maximum in terms of style even taking into account how Japanese games are um, and and so on you know yeah you know, with the knowledge of the the way that they are just the the presentation is a, a bit lacking in terms of substance there's plenty here to get you get your teeth into um, there's just enough of an overview of the background and so on but the the content I mean there is a lot there but at every turn I was feeling like it's not quite enough like there should be more suit options um, more suits even um, and the world isn't hugely rounded out it's there's enough there to go on especially if you're grounded in the kind of fiction that's that's involved the kind of series and, and manga and anime and so on you can certainly spin up the rest yourself but that does still mean it's it's lacking a bit here and the way in which the game is set up and operates i think a lot of western gamers are going to find too restrictive too structured too organized but it, it does mean that the game follows the same format as the as the source material even so I mean given the relative slimness of the book and everything else I it's it's intriguing enough and interesting enough with what's here to get you going it, it's sufficient so a high three or a low four for substance let's call it a four to be nice uh, so that is seven out of ten three and a half out of five it, it's a curiosity and I want to see how it plays but it is you know very structured I think that's an aspect of, of Japanese culture perhaps coming through so for those who are into this kind of series and serial I think it's worth picking up as a game designer I think it's worth picking up to see you know even more how Japanese style gaming diverges from Western style gaming um, so for me this was a good buy for you 
your mileage may vary. But if you're into these kind of cereals and you don't want anything as bloated and corporate as the as the Power Rangers RPG, then something like Convictor Drive might well be for you. Zang. If you love my barely prepared content here, then you'll love my completely unprepared content on my streaming channel, which is youtube.com slash grimstreams, which is pretty easy to remember.